Okay, we start now a new group of video about the genesis of Agate. So, for, for at the beginning, we will talk about the general Chalcedony and uh, we will dip into the Agate uh, stones. So, Chalcedony can be <coughs> divided in few groups. Uh, some are real concretion of Chalcedony that can be nodular or uh, filling a cavity and uh, some other are more uh, in vain and usually are chalcedony with nice colors uh, and no, in, no structure inside so this is the real mm, chalcedony that is used in gemology like chrysoprase and blue chalcedony, purple chalcedony etc. So um, the group of uh, concretion uh, I divided in two ways. Uh, that is the way how the concretion grow. Um, the nodular concretion mm, is real concretion uh, growing a nodule from a point, so from the inside to the outside. So the, the growing on this of this mm, specimen in is uh, adding a piece of chalcedony around a ball of something. So uh, the other possibility is that the chalcedony grow stick it to the wall of a cavity and make botroidal or mm, bubbled uh, structure. And this uh, can fill completely the cavity and uh, the, the grow of this uh, material is from outside to inside. So this is the group that if the cavity is completely uh, filled uh, produce banded agate or agate with inclusion. Agate with inclusion are usually not banded, chalcedony with plume, uh, dendrite, moss and many kind of inclusion inside. Instead, mm, banded agate are without inclusion are made of thin band, concentric band or uh, horizontal band that can or not fill completely the cavity. Uh, another group of agate is a little bit strange uh, is more a variety of the nodular type mm, and is a kind of cavity filling also but in this case the the growing is uh, from uh, uh, concretion so there is some point some some people call it spherulite but it's not real spherulite but it's spheric uh, concretion that grow inside uh, a, a chalcedony so the cavity is finally completely filled by a, a more or less nodular concretion growing from points okay uh, we will see some kind of structure typical of normal chalcedony the more typical structure is what is called botroidal, botrioidal chalcedony. So it's a kind of bubbly uh, structure of uh, chalcedony. The, the more typical color is mm, light blue. And this coating uh, the cavity wall. Now this kind of chalcedony is very common. Uh, in some case, the, the botroidal is if a shape a little bit more elongated, like in this nice sample. So, um, I don't know exactly what is the reason, but mm, the botroidal uh, grow in like, like a crystal, uh, but it's a, a concretion. So, there is not a preferral, pre preferred direction, so the, the botroidal are in all direction, but is more elongated than in the first case. So this is another mm, botroidal uh, Chalcedony is called crit critter agate because in some case uh, the agate is almost completely filled, but we see there is no band, so it's real chalcedony, it's not an agate. And this is the typical chalcedony that is used for jewelry, mm, but uh, is in concretion and this not vain like we see before. This chalcedony from Malawi and we see that the the bublet, the botroidal mm, 
is not so evident so the botroids are mm, mingled together to form a, a kind of uh, sheet of calcium of pore calcium so what what are the cavities that are used uh, or uh, to be filled by calcium uh, there is two main group in volcanic rock and in sedimentary rock in volcanic rock is typically mm, um, a vesicle, so a gas bubble in the, in the lava, in the lava flow. The gas bubble can be very uh, tiny or in some cases very big if there is coalescence of mm, hair bubble together and uh, in some case when a lava flow pass over uh, a pond, uh, vegetation, that the uh, big production of gas, water or something. So this gas enter inside the inside the lava it can be trapped making some bigger uh, vesicle so this kind of vesicle is usually from few centimeter to 10 20 centimeter but can reach almost one meter in some case and, and this can be filled by quartz or by any kind of uh, zeolite but uh, is the typical uh, mother rock for agate and calcedon in sedimentary rock, uh, usually mm, the cavity is a void cleaved by a fossil. Most of the fossils are carbonatic and, um, and made almost uh, by aragonite. And aragonite is unstable, can be dissolved and leave uh, a void. This is a very nice case, uh, a geode, of calcedonic geode from France. And this mm, the, the geode is mm, uh, rep replacing a crinoid. This is the main mm, uh, branch of the crinoid. This is the small branch of the crinoid. And the inside we have uh, a void uh, leave it by the dissolution of the of the crinoid and uh, replace it, uh, uh, fill it by calcium. The botroidal uh, can be more or less elongated, uh, as we see. In some cases, there is not uh, a regular direction, but in other cases, we see that most of the the structure are uh, in same direction. So, in this case, is more gravity driven, and this can call it stalactite. But uh, uh, stalactite in calcedony are not so mm, strongly uh, driven by gravity, so we can see that in some case there is a gravity control but not always so in this case for example is very evident all the stalactites are in the same direction and only in the upper part of the geode and the basal geode if not stalactite this is another very nice sample from the same location Morocco all the botroids are real stalactite but, for example, in this case, we see stalactite uh, that uh, mm, transform during its growth uh, to a uh, no gravitative direction and probably that there was a water flow inside the cavity or some other phenomenon. But there is a crystallization strength that uh, push the stalactite to be deformed. Also in this case we see mm, many many branches of the same material going in many directions so it's possible there is a kind of organic influence in this type of uh, calcedony but it's not sure about this. This is another kind of calcedony that is mm, uh, in shape of stalactite, this is gem silica from Arizona. Uh, this this is um, calcedony with copper inside with uh, chrysocolla and um, very nice very valued stones but this is another um, branch of calcedony that are not in the direction driven by gravity so it's more mm, due to flow uh, water flow inside the cavity or other phenomena and this is uh, absolutely crazy grow. Uh, it's, it's called coral calcedony from India. There is some zeolite on it, but we see that 
uh, the branch of Chalcedony in all directions there is a real confused situation so this is uh, what can be can happen with Chalcedony this is also another specimen from Brazil and this is bigger bordroid but also there is folding and a convex f shape and usually the the end of the the calcedony concretion is a, a, a sheet of crystal quartz so when quartz start to crystallize usually there is not possibility to grow calcedony on it because next step next solution that arrive will uh, easily mm, help to, to grow crystals of quartz uh, instead of to calcedony. So this is real concretion. So if the calcedony quoted the wall cavity, we call it a gildi or an agate, but if the calcedony mm, is just one side or uh, incomplete, uh, we call it uh, uh, concretion. Also in concretion we see the uh, outer uh, surface that is sticked to the wall is very botroidal uh, and complex shape but in the inner side we usually see quartz crystals so this is uh, the end of crystallization of the chalcedony uh, they are called in some case flower rose or concretion depending on the, the location but they are very similar in all the world so uh, all the structure we see here in in calcedony concretion can be included in agate if the cavity will be completely filled by calcedony by banded agate or by other stuff so this is the first sample we see of botroidal calcedony and we we can see the same structure here botroidal in this red sheet is uh, that is around this agate that is finally uh, filled by banded white agate so stalactites are not uncommon in agate so we can see here for example uh, some stalactite in the upper part of an agate um, there is a kind of agate that is called tube agate that is the um, corresponding material when we have many many branches of calcedony like this one that are uh, uh, filled void by other calcedony or banded agate so they stay um, freezed inside the node and also the, the, the flower of calcedony that we see that uh, are sticked at one side of a cavity wall can be included in a, in a wall completed agate uh, as portion of mm, different color as we can see in this sample for example this piece is a gray calcedony with with a sheet of crystal quartz on the top that is exactly the same stuff that we see here in uh, calcedony concretion so all the calcedony concretion are just a step in the growing of an agate and in the filling of the node so if we leave this in nature uh, in if there are conditions for flow inside new mm, silica solution so this material can be if this void can be filled by other calcedony and it can form a fully nodule of agate so this is a uh, botroidal uh, calcedony but we can see inside some inclusion in this case uh, we, ca we call it plume because are elongated white plume we will see uh, in a special chapter all the inclusion in calcedony but mm, uh, here just to see that typically the elongated botroidal have uh, uh, core uh, made by some kind of inclusion and this is a special kind of uh, calcedony called bamboo agate from Indonesia 
and uh, they say that probably in the Chalcedony is quoting um, a bamboo uh, in a in a pond. So uh, for this reason, mm, they are they are very long stalactites uh, and uh, they can reach half a meter or more. And uh, there are pieces of thorn of this material. Um, the material is very nice for jewelry, for make beads and uh, so on. And uh, mm, they say that they found inside the presence of uh, uh, organic matter so of the bamboo. So this is a kind of special stuff, but we can see the, the environment of formation of uh, chalcedony is very surface, uh, very mm, not so deep in the, in, the, in the soil. And now we speak about the, the real nodular concretion, and uh, this kind of stuff uh, usually is not so beautiful, so it's very rarely collected for collection for any purpose. Mm. This is a kind of small nodule called bubblegum agate from South Dakota or grape agate from Utah and uh, the they have never so much color. Usually they are white or just a little bit of red. But the structures are interesting because this is uh, a real um, nodular accretion from inside to outside and uh, there is many uh, all the structure with some mm, uh, nucleated uh, structure cotroidal mm, uh, and in many cases there is quartz on the end of the of the, the last step of uh, growing of the nodule and if uh, we found uh, if we cut a uh, kind of concretion like this, like this new material from Morocco, that I don't know yet the exact location, but is arrived uh, on the market uh, this year, and is the inside is banded from the center, uh, is grow outward and finish with quartz crystal. So we see also inside the it can be banded with some quartz bands, but mm, in the most case the quartz is, is at the end. So this is the way uh, how they grow from inside to outside. And this is a special kind of agate that called Dulgo Dulcot agate from, from England. And this, um, the filling of a cavity, in this case we know that it is a replacement after an hydrid nodule that is the, uh, that was uh, dissolved, so the anhydrid uh, material was dissolved and leave uh, a space where the chalcedony can make a concretion, but it's not an agate uh, growing in concentric banding from outside to inside but it's the same like concretion that grow from points, nucleation point and make uh, a continuous uh, adding of material with a lot of quartz and most of the end of the growing structure is made of quartz. So this is a kind of agate that grow like a concretion and not like a banded agate. And uh, another agate, but more beautiful, with the same pattern, is uh, Luna agate from Chihuahua. This uh, nice purple material that is made of many, many spherulite that grow in the center of the of the nodule uh, until uh, the nodule uh, have a, a good size for have a, a complete banding around it, uh, and. Uh, in this case also we see a uh, sphere light in the middle and a, a kind of banded portion uh, at the external mm, sheet and this mm, sample also we can see that a good portion of the banding is fibrous so it's fibrous chalcedony and uh, um, it is very possible that this material if like Dulcot an origin for substitution of a kind of 
previous nodule like uh, anhydrite or gypsum nodule and this is probably the reason because um, the mm, the concretion do not start from the cavity wall because probably um, the substitution is uh, slow um, so the uh, the point start to grow inside the anhydrite when the anhydride was not completely uh, dissolved and they start to uh, to fill a sm small cavity and uh, slowly slowly when the uh, anhydride disappear the concretion grow inside the cavity until the replacing is complete so this is more mm, a kind of uh, several more force than a real uh, banded dagger but also in real banded agate, like this one from Brazil, we can see structure very similar as uh, concretion mm, with no color and the banding uh, coming from a point from inside to outside. So this we can call spherulite, but we, we know that are not real spherulite like that one we see in Jasper that are uh, process of the devetrification of volcanic glass. So this uh, concretion mm, appeared to, to grow in, in a chalcedony material floating in a chalcedony. So uh, we will see later this kind of structure, but uh, we, we can uh, realize here that there is a strong distinction between uh, the growing of a concretion by banded material and the, the band dagger. Uh, we, we see that it is very dis different and band dagger usually contain uh, a lot of pigment. There is, is a, a colored part of band uh, of the calcedony, but uh, the, the concretion is always white and uh, we can see here uh, there is clear difference so is two different process that form this mater these two material and we can compare um, this kind of spherulite with uh, the spherulite uh, of uh, mm, ocean jasper or poppy jasper so what was the orbicular jasper so we see that the sphere the real spherulite that are the process of the vitrification of glass are usually uh, massive uh, with some uh, recrystallization so the dissolution form a colloid the, the colloid recrystallize in form of jasper or uh, fibrous material but uh, is it is usually not banded not structured and in the case of orbicular jasper that are a small group of, of jasper actually there are two very famous, the, the ocean and the, and the poppy, and uh, the spherulite grow, really grow, uh, inside uh, the chalcedony. So there is a transformation of the jasper that was all around here, the jasper transformed into chalcedony, and inside this chalcedony, the spherulite uh, grow, starts to grow again, and uh, transform in, in in a in abundant con concretion and this is exactly the way as uh, the calcedony concretion grow so we see that the banding is from the middle to outside and uh, the end of the the growing of the spherulite is a portion of quartz crystalline quartz but in this case there was a uh, an another uh, change because the quartz was uh, again replaced by jasper so the history of uh, orbicular jasper we will see in a chapter uh, later is quite complicated so we have transformation from glass to jasper transformation from jasper to chalcedony crystallization of uh, concretion the banded concretion until the uh, crystallization of quartz, then again a transformation of both of them into uh, a new jasper. So
so the history of orbicular adapter is very complex but we can we can see that uh, this kind of grow the concretion uh, of chalcedony have a pattern of grow that is typical um, of many materials that have similar structure. 